are the Banished Knights. No doubt you've seen them across the Elden Ring map, looking cool with either a halberd, two swords, or a sword and a shield. But who banished them? And why? And perhaps, most importantly, if you can get all of their gear before fighting a Remembrance boss, does that make them a secret starting class? Today we set out to find those answers as Engval and Oleg take on the Lands Between. To watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to vote for which build you'd like to see next, and to just support the channel. Oh, there's also exclusive videos over there. And make sure you like and subscribe so these videos don't get banished from your suggested feed. Heck, maybe stick around and watch another video after this one too. Now let's get started turning plowshares into swords. We'll kick it off as a samurai, another kind of knight with perfect stats to grab our banished knight's gear. Google Okina grabs Oleg's gear on your work computer to find out more. Wow, we get the horse and we're heading south again just like in the knight's cavalry run. I guess knights kinda gotta hit the Weeping Peninsula for some reason. This time we're even pushing deeper into Castle Morn. Morn in the Weeping Peninsula? Get it? Because the dogs killed me and I'm sad. Hit Edgar, just kidding, dude, it was a prank. Just kidding, it wasn't a prank. Oh damn, he can really poke. We almost died again, but made it out with the Banished Knight's halberd. And it's already plus eight. From the description, a finely crafted halberd, intricately graved with an ancient motif, given to knights who, whether by misfortune or misdeed, were forced to abandon their homes. Most of these knights were sent to the fringes, where they were forced to start anew with only despair for company. Fringes, eh? Are they fringe folk? Like the fringe folk hero's grave? A little foreshadowing there that won't be resolved. I don't go to the fringe folk hero's grave this run. This is our plow for the rest of the gear. It's long and strong and down to get the friction on. We're gonna run around the rest of the peninsula just to upgrade the flasks while we're here. Then we're heading out to start farming. Ronnie wants to talk to us, but I'm banishing her. Just let me into Noxtella early, come on. Lots of running around through Limgrave and all the way to Kaelid. Outside of the Church of the Dragon Come Onion, there are two banished knights we can farm for the rest of our gear. Fighting them with no vigor takes a little practice. That wind comes out pretty fast and also stun locks you into the next hit. While we're naked, because of the run's secret starting class rules, that combo kills us. The jump attack is pretty great at getting in since the halberd is long, okay horseback doesn't work this is all scientific have i fought these dudes naked with no vigor and halberd before no but now i can help you figure out how to do this at home so first of all don't fight the knight in the hallway wait for him to go outside in the open otherwise your halberd is gonna bonk off the wall second guy jump attack two r2s he'll make the wind and then you can jump attack again for a stance break and a win as we move through this the caleb scaling isn't quite as good as the dragon barrow scaling for runes like the vulgar militia were but it's okay we're gonna spend those runes on vigor duh drop rates for these guys because i know you're curious four percent for the sword and shield three percent for the armor pieces that means technically we could get everything in one drop we get the shield on number eight. I don't want to use the shield though. Blocking's kind of useless. So is this item description. Most of the knights were sent to the fringes where they were forced to start anew with only despair for company. I know that. I'm not stupid. That's the same lore as the halberd. At number 10, we get another shield. Now I can power stance them. When they drop an item, since we're basically crit killing them every time, they have the glowing item drop and it just kind of hovers, building that anticipation. So when we just keep getting shields, that's a bummer. It makes sense, it has a higher drop rate than the armor, but we should have something useful. Aww. Or a third shield. Now we can hold them Zoro style. One piece reference. One in the mouth, two in each hand. Google Tulak has one in each hand and a third in his mouth on your work computer to find out more, of course. We don't get the pants until the 23rd night. That is the first useful thing we have gotten. From that description, these fierce warriors were each and all accomplished. Perhaps that is why, despite their territorial loss, they were still named knights. Took the L and kept going. Real king shit there. Speaking of L's, we took another one. Yeah, sometimes the game eats the input and I don't jump off the horse. That's not good. And then, sometimes I'm just bad at fighting them. Remember, the wind stunlocks you. That's pretty bad when you don't have any health yet. Legs again. Stop it. Ugh. 
There's some birds here. Might as well hit those too. We can farm pickles for later. That'll save time. We're going to learn that some of these levels should have gone to endurance, but that's a problem for future me. A fourth shield. Now we can put one on each foot like snowshoes honestly people pointed that out on the run the feet of this armor are hilarious duck shoes what what's the deal with these guys finally get a chest piece at number 31 i guess that's not actually all that bad of luck funnily enough the armor is changing how we're able to fight these two since we're going into medium load once we put that on and the roll doesn't send us as far so it's kind of relearning after 34 banished knights we're an hour in i guess part of this was getting the halberd too which is really making this a lot better we didn't have to level up our stats all the damage is just solid enough to fight kill at enemies with a plus eight halberd if y'all didn't know stats aren't nearly as important as item level is for damage second set of armor we can give this one to a friend at least we're getting some vigor we literally have not even gotten a sword yet i really want two because we kind of did two halberd runs last month i know halberds are good i don't need to see that halberds are good again detour fudge it let's ride up to lernia super fast there's some silver pickles that boost our item discovery by 50 we can use these graces later in the run anyway yeah took six minutes i don't know if it's going to be worth it especially not if i'm a silly goose and end up getting killed while one of the pickles is active Ugh, wasting the rest of the pickle. Big sad. How many nights can we even get done with an active pickle? Uh, two, four, six ish. We didn't lose that much on the pickle, at least. This is killing the metrics for this run, though. We still haven't fought a boss, and we're over a hundred minutes in. At 61, we finally get our first sword. Item description is the same as the halberd and the shield. So, for the lore, let's look at the Oleg Spirit Ash, because we're not going to pick him up. We're just going to become Oleg. One of the two knights known as Wings of the Storm. After his banishment, he attracted the notice of a grace-given lord. And later, having slain a hundred traitors as that lord's hand, Oleg earned the hero's honor of Erdtree Burial. Ideally, we'll get a second sword sometime here. That's another shield. With a 3% drop rate, we are now around double where we should be for all the drops. But if anyone needs another shield... DM me on Patreon. I'll I'll give it to you. I'm on PS5. Oh, hey, or maybe more armor. You can tell how long we've been at this by looking at our vigor. Oh, another shield. Or our number of shields. Or our number of armors. Why not? Were these knights banished because they have terrible drop rates? Okay, at 77, we finally get a second sword. And a hat. Same drop. Only need the gauntlets now. Nice. <laughs> Not another armor or another set of armor or another shield or more pants at an hour 50 we get our hundredth knight still no gauntlets with a three percent drop rate it's not unreasonable to think we'd have them by now i mean we have plenty of armor shoes and shields but no hands why can't we simply catch these hands another sword now we can zoro one piece the swords more legs now we can armor up godric the legs have the same drop rate as the gauntlets but you wouldn't know that because we just got another set of legs it takes a hundred and twenty-one dead knights before we get the hands and just like that at two hours and five minutes we've beaten zero bosses and died nine times now we can start the run that's really sad i think i'm gonna go for a run myself and i'm gonna go for a run with today's sponsor raycon that's right, gamers. Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Oleg and Engval may be a dynamic duo in the lands between, but Raycon's everyday earbuds are a dynamic duo with me and my running playlist. I guess that's a trio. Spicy. When I'm running, I get sweaty. Maybe I'm getting chased by a Kalid dog as well. But the optimized gel tips of these earbuds make sure that they're not just staying in my ears, they're staying comfortable in my ears. These everyday earbuds aren't just for workouts though, they're also for your daily chores. So you can listen to your favorite podcast while you do the dishes, like, I don't know, it's probably not Aliens, a show that debunks ancient aliens conspiracy theories. I guest hosted the Christmas episodes, but I listened to the other episodes. Binge it for up to 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. Your dishes will be so clean, you could eat off of them. You want to fall in love this month? Fall in love with Raycon. Tens of thousands of people have already left 5-star reviews, so sorry if you thought it was going to be monogamous, but Raycon is too hot not to trot. 
All of this for half the price of the other premium audio brands. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash height for 15% off your Raycon purchase and free shipping. That's right, you can now imagine Raycon in Fort Height. Get started listening today. Now I'll actually get started on this build in Elden Ring. Now there was a time After getting all of those extra levels in vigor, we didn't get the endurance we need for the armor. Whoops. Then we fell off the branch on the way to the abandoned cave. Double digit deaths before we have beaten a boss that's pretty terrible. Obviously we're here to beat up the clean rot knights and get as much money as we possibly can. No buddy yet, just that plus eight halberd and yeah, halberd good. Decent stance pressure, amazing reach, poise pressure for smaller enemies. These are smaller enemies, it makes this fight pretty much free. But the scarab is just one part of that over-leveled puzzle. We also need to grab our pickles. Hey, maybe that's why we got banished, come to think of it. Nerd Juice gets hit with the ultimate NPC counter, hitting R1 with a halberd. Is it possible to learn this power? Patches gets a few R2s to break his guard and a nice thick crit with our nice and long plus eight halberd. Drops a plus seven spear. Oh my God, that's embarrassing. Imagine only being a plus seven. I would never. Hey, we're like two hours in and we don't have a physic flask yet. What is this? The proper order bosses run? Grab the stamina physic tier and then ignore the charged attack talisman because we're not really going to be doing those that much this run. But we will definitely be imagining being banished in Fort Height. Remember, that's the offer code for today's sponsor. I love that they're cool with that. Thanks again, Raycon. Warp to the Dragon Barrel, rob some graves, and fight the Putrid Avatar. Not gonna waste the time hitting the dragon with too much health. I'll just hit a tree with too much health. It's worth more runes and can be critically hit. The slow nature of this fight leads to a couple whiffs and this dude does hit like a sequoia, but we win and put a three minute timer on for Grail. The damage isn't great here either. It's almost as though we haven't invested in our stats and we're only at plus eight. The pickle expires, but we had another one and now we can put on more of the armor. Time to save our buddy? Brother? Lover? Hopefully not all three. Maybe two. Hopefully not the bad two. It's Angval. Gotta fight the Grave Warden Duelist. Guess where you just got into Cool Guy Zone. Hey Phil, if you love the Grave Warden Duelists so much, why haven't you done a run as them? Two reasons. One, they would crush anyone in a poll on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Tulak, by the way. And two, I'm huffing that copium that we get a Spirit Ash for one of them in the DLC. If we do, they're the number one on the list, baby. Anyway, that was a Limgrave boss. Here's what we need to know about Angval from the description. One of the two knights dubbed Wings of the Storm. Despite his banishment, he rejected the invitation of a grace-given lord, instead keeping watch over a masterless castle for many years, gaining renown as hero of the fringes. Hey, Engval, uh, just quick note, buddy. If the castle doesn't have a master and you're the one defending it, you're the master of the castle. Squatter's rights. Margaret will get the halberd treatment. It turns out swords are individually heavier than the halberd. So we need a lot more endurance to properly wield them. Hit Gostock with the helicopter, helicopter. Then zoom through the danger path. The big heavy armor has a lot of benefits. Well, it has one benefit. You can take more hits. And investing in endurance is honestly kind of sick. You can sprint longer. You can get more hits in your combo. Roll out of the way afterwards. It's kind of great. I, I think I've dunked on endurance in the past and nah, endurance is pretty good. Right by the secluded cell, we can grab the Stormcaller Ash of War. Not only is it a great Ash of War, it's also great advice. You should call her. Killing Godric will get us plus five to every stat quickly and beating him shouldn't be too hard. I wanted to test out our tainted wins against his tainted wins. They seem all right. It's basically the Thunderstorm Ash from Nefeli without lightning. Stance pressure is decent, lots of hits, huge range because of the Halberd. I like. And in a little bit, we'll even have something else to make it cooler. Let's get those extra levels, and maybe with the Great Rune, that will be enough to power stance the swords. Ah, still no. Okay, into Fort Faroth, where we'll get the Dectus Medallion half and something a little risky. The Radigan Sword Seal. It's so dangerous, we get killed by the rats. But it will also give us plus five to the physical stats if we've got big enough balls. And, uh, I mean, look at this. He's got a pretty nice piece. We whiffed the Lernia jump. Oh God, just like, ugh. 
that sucks. Between the extra deaths and the time it took to grind, things are not looking good for the banished knights in the ranking. Unless, of course, I decide I like it more and put it higher on the tier list. I'm mad with power, baby. I can do whatever I want. Let's fix it a little bit by hitting Smarag in the face. Our pretty nice piece is pretty great at hitting things in the mouth. Especially when it likes going for that dive tackle. That's the best one to punish. Get some stabs in the face on a stance break. It's not a hard fight, just kind of a long one. Wow, it's long and it's not even hard? Impressive. There's something good for us in Rhea Lucaria, but it's locked behind the Red Wolf of Radagon. Honestly, they should call this guy the Is It Wolf of Radagon. It's definitely not mono red though giant power and pitiful toughness that's pretty red uh behavior right outside we get the glintstone wet blade and now we can make our weapons cold some of the banished knights use cold weapons so that means it's time for a cold weapon run this might be the third week in a row we've done a cold weapon run but um well it's winter that's how we do it unless you're a southern hemisphere viewer in which case uh hi sorry your toilets flush the wrong way i don't understand why you keep using them if they pull the poop out of the sewer we're not finishing raya lucaria yet instead we'll go to the raya lucaria crystal cave so different i mean it is a lot different there's a lot of standard smithing stones here we're gonna be leveling up two standard weapons it's a necessary journey crystallion easy moving on up to altus and into a tunnel a sealed tunnel but this tunnel isn't sealed for quality because because well, it's, a, it's a tunnel and tunnels and Elden Ring kind of suck. At least we finally have the double sword moveset and power stance greatswords are pretty good. Let's test it against the Onyx Lord. Damage is nice. Stance pressure looks nice. It's eating up a lot of stamina. So we'll have to watch out for that. But overall, solid B-ish, B minus maybe for now. Oh, one of them's at nothing? Oh! Oh, we put on the one that doesn't do anything. Yeah, so it turns out, remember how we had three swords? I leveled up the wrong one, or I equipped the one that I didn't level up. So that's a pretty bad test for the swords. Let's get them leveled up properly, then we'll level up our best buddy, number one bro, Engval. Let's ride. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. Actually, we need some materials to level them up. And if you need weed, go to a party. Someone at the Radon Festival has to be holding. There's a guy there who's literally made of pot. Radon is harshing the vibes, though. So let's summon everyone. Tragoth comes in late, so casual greeting shows up late and gets us hit? Thanks, buddy. Our frosty swords are cool, and Okina resets the frostbite with his fiery sword. Maybe that's better? One more frostbite after he lands basically kills him. Only takes a few more hits. Get another pocket at the round table. Hold, then back to Altus to fill it. Hey, Gilka, do you like Stormcaller? I feel like Frostbite on each hit really puts some stank on it. It manages to feel comparable to Thunderstorm. Here's the comparison. It's still worse, but I did get to compare them. Honestly, it would be better on the Halberd. The Halberd would probably just be better. We've just done too many Halberds this year. We never get to Power Stance. So let's make everything a little bit worse for variety. Like when you go to Applebee's instead of Chili's. Mamic next, and God, look at all the extra gear we got from Farm. Farming. Farming really killed the time here. I was hoping to make this a single stream, but we're only in Nokron lighting torches. Oh god, we haven't even started the optional mandatory Rani quest. But I refuse, at least for now. I think Renala would be more interesting as a way to end the stream, and I can make it more interesting by forgetting to take the cold infusion off. That's going to split our damage with magic, so we're not going to do great here. Although, Stormcaller does make it a one cycle for phase one. That's pretty cool. Some power stance jump attacks and, uh, yeah, just do that a lot. Keep doing that and win. Maybe power stance greatsword's kind of rip. Maybe stream two will make up some time. Oh, also, maybe we still have time to start the Ronnie quest, actually. I just sprinted through and mashed through Loretta. Can't yeah, Frostbiter, who cares? Just keep calling that storm and jumping in. Bash her up. Now, we'll go to stream two. Gotta run a bunch of errands for the weed we need to make Engval stronger. Apparently, Ronnie isn't holding, but she does know a place where we can go for some of the good stuff. Only willing to tell us about it if we get her a knife first, so back to Nokron. I forgot why we were here. Are we here to fight the Reagan ancestor spirit? Sure. Much like Reagan, this thing has power for way too long and just kind of ruins things for me on a regular basis despite being super ancient and removed from the world now we'll get the knife give it to ronnie and she gives us some glass work makes sense because finally we can get the good kush it's in the incel river main along with astel jr and a bunch of ants say hi to phalanx demons holes phalanx demons hold ah no no <laughs> i got phalanx demons hold <laughs> This is all the Radigan Sword Seal's fault, by the way. The extra 15% damage penalty really removes the benefits we would have from heavy ass armor. Try again, get the bell bearing so we can buy Ghost Wart from the ladies at the round table hold. Zoom, zoom, zoom through the rest of Nox Stella, then we get to run through the Lake of Rot. We have enough health, it's 
fine. Would be cool if we could just use one of our eight shields to surf across it, but oh well. Astel can't be frostbitten. Do you think I remember to take off the frostbite? No. But at least Engval is here now and helping us with stuff. He's got a halberd and it's basically just us from earlier in the run with worse damage and no frostbite. Still one of the best spirit ashes. Pretty cool. Kill Bogart? You can be a dude without hating women. Just look at these two bros, Engval and Oleg. Their masculinity is based on respect, honor, and rapidly proccing status effects. Since this armor is meant for the banished lands, it's gotta be hot as hell in Volcano Manor, like forgetting to take off a sweater while you're cooking. Speaking of cooking, we cooked the Godskin Noble with Frost. So more like Flash froze him, like that ice cream that's been the future of ice cream for 40 years. Hey Dippodots, if you were gonna be the future, you'd be ice cream by now. Then we beat Rykard with the Serpent Hunter. Moving on! Hey Phil, you've used that clip for Rykard before. Well, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. If I gotta come up with new Rykard isn't worth narrating jokes every time, I'll eventually eat a broken glass salad with Tide Pod croutons. I'm gonna be real. It's been a minute since we used a Spirit Ash and the Valiant Gargoyles are just like, manageable when you have one. I think it's kind of telling that you can summon D for this if you've done his quest and Bernie's outside the Godskin duo. For both of the major gank fights, FromSoft gives you an extra buddy. You're really just supposed to have one more person than the boss does. Immediately disproven by the FIA champs. Oh, but that's just because these simps can't handle the power of an AoE. Storm calling is such a nice hack for NPCs. I think when you're playing at home, you should absolutely just get a tool that cheeses NPC fights and skip them. They are nobody's favorite boss because they're just kind of lazy. Like the unique mechanics of something I hate, like the Crucible Knight, are better than, oh, I'll put three guys in there, go nuts on them. With that, we've opened a portal to the Royal Capital. They thought they banished us. Too bad it didn't take. For whatever reason, the Erdtree Avatar decides it only wants to use Elden Stars Jr. That's fun. Honestly, it's probably better than Elden Stars since the beams actually do pretty substantial amounts of damage. Fight off some more Grave Warden Duelists for the Ritual Shield Talisman. These ones don't throw their cloaks off though, so they're only very cool instead of extremely cool. This Godfrey can't be frostbitten, so he's literally not cool. He's very dead though. Another pocket. I don't know what to put in it. Uh, turtle? Turtle. Turtle! Frostbite messes up Black Knives, probably why Ronnie is their boss. Now it's time for Morgoth, a guy who kicked us out, probably, maybe not. I don't know. We have a few jumps. That's annoying. Also, gotta remember to put some blue juice in here so we have enough magic for Stormcaller after we summon Engval. It's not like a big deal. We're just kind of steamrolling everything, but we could steamroll faster. For Biden lands, and maybe there should be consequences if you deny a federal order followed by a Supreme Court verdict to be abnormally cruel to immigrants. More than a finger wave, perhaps. Mountaintops of the Giants time, that smithing stone bell bearing will let us get our swords up to plus 18 and just in time for the Fire Giant. He runs up to the Jank Hill, which is a bit annoying but we can frostbite him nicely. It's funny that when you frostbite him, his skin just gets super ashy. Someone get this guy some lotion. Makes sense with all the fire in his tummy that his skin would be dry. Oh, and he's in a frozen wasteland too. Yeah, this dude is asking for cracks. Doesn't matter that the frostbite resistance is super high. Each hit with these swords is stacking like a hundred frost sauce each. Burn down the Erd tree. Hey, maybe they were right to kick us out. Let's go to the Tornado Town for Ramazula. Godskin Duo comes with another summon and Bernie makes the perfect third for Oleg and Engval because he's here. We solo the Chunky while they double team the Lanky one and darn it, they won the race. But then it's a 3v1. Over and over again, we just straight up. Do not let these boys breathe. You ever try to catch your breath on an excessively cold day? It's difficult. Let's fight Garonk, but not Malakef in the Dragon Barrow Church, where he can't really run away, and it turns out that makes him super easy. Now we have all the dragon stones we need to max out the swords. We're going to the castle's hole instead. Here, we could farm the unaltered Banished Knight set, but... No, no, I just don't want to do it. Sorry, I know Fashion Souls is important to y'all, but I spent two goddamn hours getting this set. I'm not doing it again to have like a cape or whatever. Let's go fight our real boss, Commander Nile, and he brings in two banished knights. It's night on night on night on night. We win though, one of them was using a shield and that's a silly move set. Simply hit more. Once it's two on one, Nile gets absolutely destroyed. Engval rules. Power stance, cold greatswords rule. Everything just kind of kicks ass now. It takes a while, but we're really moving. 
including moving through learning it to kill an old man for the other piece of the Hallig Tree medallion so we can zoom to the consecrated snowfield. Penguin Noble is an NPC. We have a spin cycle for that. Get washed, dude. Seriously, I feel like all the acolytes of Moog need to take a shower and get off 4chan for a minute. Moogwin is so bloody. That's gonna stain gross. Turn on the lantern just for you sick freaks who like to light your caves. What's wrong with you? You degenerate worm. Might sound mean, but for some of you out there, that was very nice of me. Maybe I'm mean to the commenters because I'm serving their humiliation kink. Did you ever think about that? We don't have the Eleanora tier, but we do have the jump attack button. Frostbite pops up right before the stance break, and I punish with the storm caller. Crits while power stance don't use both weapons, but it would be sick if they did. Can you imagine an Elden Ring 2 if you get to put both of your swords over boss's neck and then dragging them down like you decapitated them i don't think it's something they could add in the dlc but it would be a cool way to make power stancing better for the sequel phase two isn't even that bad having a spirit ash to split aggro really makes this fight a lot more bearable now we have enough strength that we don't need the physics tier instead we'll bully the absolute hell out of the putrid avatar for that combo tier power stancing builds combo fast and this putrid avatar drops a stupid amount of runes anyway that's just a double win liturgical town is right nearby uneventful just something we kind of have to do on our way to the Hallig tree but we have to respect because i goofed and double goof we didn't get the grace so triple goof we have to fight moongrim he can't bury the storm caller dork respect then go to the Hallig tree and make that swag jump a lot of the tricky jumps in this game are intimidating to try and learn but trust me this one's worth it just look for one of the little notches that sticks out and hop it's much more forgiving than it looks and it's much easier than dealing with that battle mage on that tight bridge loretta again but this one can get hit with status effects engval is also keeping the pressure up so she just kind of gets comboed to death we missed the swag jump in for amazula it'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic I'm getting the grace for the Alexander Path later. We'll have room to use the Jar Shard, but I'm not totally sure I want to commit to doing the quest. It's a bit long, and I'm already trying to make up time for the extra farming. For now, bird run and hit up Malekith. Bring in Angval and start swinging. He's in phase two super fast. He jumps without doing a blade beam. I don't know if you're allowed to do that. I just keep chasing him down. We get the frostbite and win. Nothing too hard here. I've got those patterns down pat. With that, we've gotten our revenge on the royal capital for kicking us out. Though, technically, the city's god is still alive, so let's just finish everything off to be thorough. Gideon gets storm collared. It's super funny, but not really worth spending a lot of time on. Instead, here's why we haven't done Virgil in Elden Ring, like a million people already have. We kind of just don't do characters from other series anymore. Commission it though, and then I'll do Moonvale like everybody else did. We eat our pickle too late, which sucks, but that just puts a three minute timer on to beat Godfrey. Freaking Gideon talks for so long that we only have a minute 30 by the time we hit the Godfrey arena, or that pickle gets wasted. Run in, bring out Engval and start jumping. We're playing super greedy here, which gets us a frostbite. Not super easy to do on Godfrey. He's got really high resistances. Engval breaks him down before he can fissure, so then he just starts going for the big shockwave. Charged attack sends him to phase two. He makes a giant earthquake that misses a grab, so we can jump attack. It's a big long flurry that we have to wait out. Oh no. Jump attack as he goes for the shockwaves, then frostbite as he finishes. He's making the big earthquake, but I just don't care tank it after we kill him we almost missed out on 30,000 rooms and that would have taken you know whole minutes to make up the stakes are medium left the frostbite on for radagon he can get cold even if elden beast can't engval is always a huge help i missed the early jump punish on the stomp that's embarrassing kind of doesn't matter if we make silly mistakes though because our armor is thick our health bar is long and if you're thick and long life is just better elden beast does the standard runaway attacks before going for some melee options and then i just face tank elden stars remember thick and long it's real strong and down to get the deicide on placidious axe should be fine we can get the frostbite and turn him into combo food to get the most out of our physic flask a detour to get millicent's prosthesis would help but again i'm trying to make up time it's all going great until plassy hits us with three hits on the same fire breath unprofessional bullshit Every time I said the first time we fought him is true the second time too. We just don't get hit with the baloney. We almost kill him before the Omega laser and have some pretty bad positioning for it, but can make up for that, get in and close it out. Study Hall, hug Fia, fight Fortisex, just hit his toes a lot, and now let's go to a good boss fight. LFL is uneventful. I don't know why everyone hates how I walk through the waterfall. I don't care if you can backstep through it. Walking is fine. Backstepping is annoying to pull off. Just let me cook. We will take a little time off the path to do Alex's quest, fighting the Magma Worm, could boost the stats but uh i don't know 
I don't want to. We'll just fight Alex instead, and for Amazula. He can't handle the storm. There aren't many who can. Melania time. I run away like a coward and get my buddy Engval out here. Some spirit ashes get sauced by Melania and turn into healing pods for her. Engval ain't one of them. His jump attacks are constantly flattening her while we storm her down and get those frostbite pops. Doggy Dance is always a problem, but the big armor makes it less of a problem. We made it to phase two on the first attempt. Let's go, gamers. Engval is still around half health and the first onion doesn't heal her. Start storm calling here. Engval will do the same. Then she does another onion. Storm call her out of that, but second phase ducky dance has more damage so we died it obviously would be better if we won but i'm still happy with that for a first attempt Second attempts are always more merciful. You can summon your Spirit Ash without getting jumped. Frostbite is almost instant on her with the Power Stance Swords. A Storm gets the Stance Break. I decided to just finish it instead of going for the crit. She has the smallest crit window of any boss in the game. There's a good chance we wouldn't have gotten to it. No Ducky Dance this time in Phase 1. Love to see that. Wait out the entire Onion, then get the Storm going. Knock her on her ass and hit the Jump Attack button. Then she uses Attack of the Clones to heal and almost murder Engval. Very cool, very fair move. Another ducky dance, but this one whiffs more so we can heal off and get back in with a storm. Engval is dead, but that storm breaks her down for another crit. Onion 2. She whiffs, and hey, let's just greet in. We can do that amount of damage before she wakes up from the onion attack. At 6 hours and 52 minutes, we killed 35 bosses and died 16 times. Even with 2 hours of farming and 9 deaths while farming? This is making it to the top of A tier. I was planning on manually moving it up because it felt so strong after we actually got the materials, but damn, I guess we don't need to. Great swords have a very solid power stance moveset. Lots of armor forces you to crank your endurance, but you won't really mind having the extra stamina. Weirdly enough, this could just get better if you pushed it further since cold swords have C scaling in three stats and we only had capped strength. And having a spirit ash just helps so much. I'm trying to use them less and I really shouldn't be. They're part of the game. They're a fun part of the game. They make the game more fun. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring every week. Join the Patreon for more videos, exclusive videos to vote in the polls and just to keep these videos coming out. It's the best place to support the channel. And follow me on Twitch if you want to hang out. I'm going to be doing a really big, long stream later this year. You'll want to follow now, so you'll be part of all the inside jokes by the time we start.